people are infected with recency bias or normalcy bias, you look at the numbers, you look at the fundamentals, you look at the logic, you look at the history. In a world of probabilities, I would say that there is going to be a moment that will, as you said, catch many people off guard because they don't see what's coming straight at them and you can't get out of the way of what you don't see. Welcome to Silver News Daily, your ultimate destination for all things precious metals. If you're passionate about the glimmer of silver and the world of precious metals, you're in the right place. By hitting that magical subscribe button, you're joining a community of like-minded thinkers who see the potential of silver and precious metals shaping the future. Buckle up, because we're diving headfirst into the latest news and updates. Hey there, buddy. Pull up a chair because if I got some news for you. Do you remember those times we chatted about the global economy and the dominance of the dollar? Well, something big is on the horizon. Patrick Barron from the Mises Institute, yeah, the same institute that champions the Austrian School of Economics, has thrown quite the curveball our way. He's saying, and brace yourself for this, the dollar's reign supreme in international trade might be on its last leg. No, no, I'm not pulling your leg. Barron isn't just hinting at some minor shifts or adjustments. He's talking about the potential collapse of the dollar's predominant position. And if that wasn't enough to make you raise an eyebrow, he's going even further. He believes that the whole fiat currency system, that's basically the foundation of the monetary system for most countries, is also skating on thin ice. Can you imagine? The entire landscape of global trade could be on the verge of a massive shakeup. But wait, before you think this is just another outlandish theory from some financial guru trying to grab headlines, let me dive into why Barron is waving this massive red flag. I got a feeling you're going to find his reasoning pretty compelling. I mean, the implications of what he's suggesting are monumental, especially for how countries do business with each other. This isn't just about some academic debate. It could affect everything from how we buy stuff to how governments make decisions. So grab a cup of coffee or tea, if that's your jam, and let's really unpack this. And trust me, by the end of our chat, you'll see the global financial landscape in a whole new light. Okay, so let's journey to the vibrant city of Johannesburg, South Africa. Picture this, leaders from the BRICS nations, Brazil, Russia, India, China, and South Africa are all gathered for a major summit. It's not just your typical meet and greet affair. Something groundbreaking is on the table. Barron is buzzing about a crucial agreement made there, the establishment of an alternative international trade system. Now I can almost hear you thinking, what's so special about a new trade system? Well, my friend, the game changer here is that this new system might be based on commodities. And no prizes for guessing, one of the heavy hitters in this setup will be our shiny old friend Gold. But here's where things get even more fascinating. While on the surface, it might seem like a tussle between the Western democracies and the BRICS nations, Barron believes it's actually a deeper ideological battle. It's the age-old debate between Keynesian economic theory, pretty much the playbook for many modern economies, and Gold. The main contender here isn't paper money or even digital currency. Gold, Barron claims, is primed to take the championship belt. Imagine a world where the gold in your jewelry or vaults doesn't just glitter, it could redefine the rules of global trade. While some might see this as a return to older economic systems, it could also signal the dawn of a new era in international commerce. Just think about it, a world where the weight of gold influences trade decisions as much as any current trade deal or policy. Isn't it wild to imagine such a shift? But hey, if the BRICS nations are making moves in this direction, it's definitely worth keeping an eye on. These are, after all, some of the most significant players in the global economy we're talking about. So, remember our history lessons about the gold standard? We used to chat about how countries, once upon a time, pegged their currencies to gold, right? Well, Barron's been doing some deep diving and he's come up with some eyebrow-raising observations. First off, he's firmly stating that gold, despite all the changes in global economics, has never been truly outdone by fiat currency. Now, I can almost see that puzzled look on your face. Did we move on from gold for a reason? You might be thinking. Barron's argument is a bit of a throwback mixed with a twist. He believes that the gold standard wasn't traded in for a superior monetary system. Instead, it was gradually nudged out, not because it was outdated or inefficient, but to fuel the state's growing hunger for more and more money. And you know what that drive for money resulted in? Here's the kicker. Wars that never seemed to end, an ever-growing welfare state, skyrocketing public deficits, and a re But wait, there's more. The fiat dollar, which has been the superstar of the global economy, has seen its purchasing power when compared to gold plummet by a hopping 98% since 1971. Let that sink in, and recent events like sanctions against Russia, post the Ukraine invasion and the subsequent freezing of Russian assets only hasten the move towards an alternative system. Barron has this eye-opening perspective on Keynesian economics, suggesting that its major flaw lies in prioritizing aggregate demand over production. 
It's like wanting to enjoy a feast without preparing a meal first. As Jean Baptiste put it, you need to produce to reap the benefits of consumption. The allure of this theory, well, he gave governments the license to spend without boundaries, all with money conjured out of thin air. Talk about a magic trick. But as with all magic, there's a catch, and this one might just be a ticking time bomb for the global economy. All right, picture this, a bustling global marketplace where the wave your gold decides the strength of your trade. Barron paints a vivid picture of a new international trade settlement system. And the protagonist in this story, gold. It's like seeing an old friend rise to fame in a modern world. Now, why does gold get the spotlight here? Well, Barron argues that the advantages of a gold-based system will be so evident that it's not just the BRICS nations who want in, but potentially everyone on the global stage. Talk about a blockbuster comeback. So you might be wondering what makes this gold-based system so special. The political perks are evident. No one nation can boss around or manipulate the system to snag an unfair advantage. Everyone's on an equal playing field. Gold doesn't play favorites. And on the economic front, this system is a game changer. Instead of funding bloated government expenditures, resources will be channeled to boost production. The result? A healthier economy and who knows, maybe even happier citizens. Here's an interesting catch in this system. Nations can only increase their imports if they equally ramp up their exports. Imagine the competitive yet healthy pressure this would place on governments. They would be motivated to refine their economies, encouraging industries and services that genuinely contribute and innovate. However, here's a cautionary twist. Artificially boosting demand could backfire big time. If a nation tried to play fast and loose, their gold reserves would deplete, leading to a potential halt in imports. So, in essence, the system is self-correcting, promoting sound economic practices. Now for countries accustomed to a more fiat-driven, liberal economic approach, particularly the Western democracies and the US, Barron hints they might be in for a bumpy ride. Huge welfare obligations and certain industries that don't genuinely add value could weigh them down in this new gold-driven race. It's fascinating, isn't it? The idea that global military might or sprawling bases across the globe won't determine a nation's strength, but rather their gold reserves and economic prudence. A shift from firepower to gold power, if you will. Okay, let's imagine a world where the same gold-based system for international trade starts to seep into our everyday transactions. Imagine going to buy your morning coffee and instead of a paper currency backed by a government's promise, it's backed by a tangible, universally accepted value, gold. Sounds straight out of a sci-fi novel, right? Barron seems to think this could be our reality. As the gold settlement system solidifies its role in international trade, Barron sees a ripple effect where it starts influencing domestic monetary systems. It's as if gold is on a world tour, and after its international gig, it's coming to rock the local scene. So, where does this leave our current stars of fiat currencies? Well, they could be facing their curtain call. Being subject to inflation and susceptible to debasement by governments, they might just find themselves getting a tad bit rusty in this new golden age. It's an ironic twist when you think about it. The very currencies which were hailed as the evolved, modern replacements for gold might end up being viewed as antiquated relics themselves. Barron even conjures an image of fiat currencies being discarded on the ash heap of history. A dramatic visualization for sure, but it underscores a profound prediction that in a world where value needs to be tangible and consistent, intangible promises just won't cut it. Remember back in 1924 when Keynes predicted the end of the gold standard? In this unfolding narrative, Barron suggests a delicious twist of fate. It might actually be the fiat currencies that become the barbarous relics. All right, it's announcement time. On August 24th, the BRICS leaders dropped some news and it's got everyone talking. They've got a task for their finance ministers, explore local currencies, dive into the nitty gritty of payment instruments and platforms, and report back with their findings. It's like you're preparing for a massive financial science project. Now let's address the elephant in the room. Is this a move to replace the SWIFT system? If you recall, SWIFT is the dollar-based interbank settlement system that's been the backbone of global finance. But South African finance minister Enoch Godonwana wants to clear up any misconceptions. He asserts that this new BRICS initiative isn't a SWIFT alternative. Instead, it's a system aimed at deepening the use of global currencies. It's less about revolution and more about evolution. However, here's where it gets juicy, with Russia soon taking the BRICS helm, speculations are rife. Is President Putin gearing up for a massive de-dollarization statement at the next BRICS summit? Could we potentially see the launch of a gold-backed trade currency for the entire bloc? If true, this could send shockwaves across the global financial arena. But hold on to your hats because there's more. The BRICS bloc isn't just playing its old sandbox, they're expanding their playground. With heavyweight oil exporters like Saudi Arabia, UAE, and Iran joining the ranks, the greenback's petrodollar status might just be under threat. 
This isn't just a tweak in the monetary system. It's a seismic shift that could redefine the pillars of global finance. Let's paint a picture. The sun's rising, there's a slight chill in the air, and as you open up your browser to check the morning news, headlines flash about gold prices soaring. Why? Because US consumer optimism just stumbled and fell flat on its face. Yep, this August, the high-flying consumer confidence we saw is coming back down to earth. The conference board released some numbers, and they weren't what economists expected. We're talking a drop in consumer confidence index from a pretty decent 114 in July to a more somber 106.1 in August. That's like expecting a gentle summer rain and getting a hailstorm. Now, what's getting consumers all jittery? Rising prices seem to be the villain here. Just imagine heading to your local grocery store and finding prices steadily climbing or pulling up to the gas station and watching those numbers roll up faster than you can say, fill her up. Dana Peterson, the chief economist at the conference board, flagged that consumers are getting more and more preoccupied with these skyrocketing costs. Gold being the diva that it is, seized its moment in the spotlight. With consumer confidence on the downturn, the gold market decided to strut its stuff, rallying in response to the bleak economic data. Last check, spot gold was glittering at $1,933 an ounce, a healthy uptick for the day. Peeling back the layers on the report, it wasn't just a singular dip in consumer sentiment. It was widespread, with indicators like the Present Situation Index and the Expectations Index both showing a decline. Although silver lining the Expectations Index did stay above the crucial 80 level, a threshold that's seen as a harbinger for recessions. But a warning shot was fired. Even with consumers shaking off fears of a looming recession, there's a hint in the air suggesting one could be around the corner. Whew, what a journey we've been on together. From the shifting tides of the US dollar's dominance and the intriguing moves by the BRICS nations to the sparkling allure of gold and the mood swings of consumer confidence, we've traversed a mosaic of economic landscapes. And through it all, one thing remains clear. The world of finance and economics is ever-changing, always keeping us on our toes. But before I sign off, I want to say a massive thank you for joining me on this exhilarating ride. Your company has made each twist and turn all the more special. If you found value in today's chat, don't forget to give that like button a tap and subscribe to the channel. It'll make sure you stay in the loop for all future updates. And one last crucial point. While we're passionate about bringing you the latest news and insights, remember this is for informational purposes only. It's essential to do your own research and consult professionals when making any investment decisions. Stay curious, stay informed, and until next time, take care and see you soon.